Yeah, well, what an incredibly exciting day, and you, got, you could feel, you could just feel the energy of the people in the control room that were applauding and cheering after so many years of trying to put this project together to meet its final stages. That's, that right there is a model of perseverance. It's about the actual size, and it shows off the cameras and other features. But today on Mars, it was the real perseverance that was the star of the show. That sound confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. For most of these scientists, this was the first day they've been in the same room together because of the pandemic. And what a day it was. Many have been on the project since it started eight years ago. That's a good chunk of your life and career to put into, a, to put into something that in seven minutes you're either going to succeed or not. That seven minutes of terror, as they call it, the time the craft is careening to the Martian surface in silence, a real nail biter. Arms, and it was so exciting. I'm so happy for us. What did that moment feel like? There's a lot of relief. And that's understandable when you consider the many challenges this team had to overcome. Challenges with hardware problems, technical innovations, and then in March, COVID came along complicating matters. Hello, Mr. President. President Biden calling NASA's acting administrator Steve Jersick apparently as excited as he was. Absolutely, sir. That, that's, that's a lot of what we do is show the United States and the world, the country and the world, what is possible. And we did that again today. Scientists say that landing, a first of its kind, was spectacular. It was in a safe area where there may be fossils of past microbial life. That landing spot was believed to once be a lake. And the tweets trumpeting the first pictures, hello Mars. This is, I would say, uh, one of the top five achievements in all of the history of science at NASA. It's the first slack of the first round trip to our planet. We're going to pick up those samples and bring them back. And so for me, it's an absolutely historic achievement. Team member Bethany Hellman says there's a helicopter attached to the belly of the rover that'll be able to make flights around Mars. And those cameras for navigation, getting microscopic images from many meters away. And then that big cyclops eye, that's cool. There's actually a camera in there, a remote microscopic imager, but also multiple spectrometers, including a laser that lets us fire at plasma at a rock, look at the plasma and tell the chemistry of the rocks inside. And there's so much yet to come. But on this day, landing day, it worked flawlessly. I mean, literally flawlessly. If you ask scientists around here, they'll tell you that this Perseverance project is the beginning. It lays the groundwork for humans on Mars. And we'll talk about that at 545. I'm Hal Eisner, Fox 11 News. Alex, Christine, back to you. You know, Hal, that rover and helicopter named by kids, they call the kids the Mars generation. Uh, Hal, we're not going to get those rocks back for some time, though, right? Right. It, it's going to be a while, and, and, and you know, they're, they're going to do a lot of different things to get the rocks, to get the samples, to try to learn. That will be gathered. Then there'll be another rover that'll come along, and that will collect it and then send it back to Earth. And that's still a couple of years away.